in, um, in, in this room, in this, in this building, in this room, there are some very, very troubling burdens on people. Uh, in this room there are some very very serious issues in people's lives um, that's not even I'm not even counting things that are going on with all of our extended congregation um, how I'm doing it this morning, I did not plan on doing it, um, so you'll forgive me if I'm going to stumble here for a little bit. Um, a few weeks ago, I mentioned that um, just about how great things were going in this church um, since our Bible conference um, with Brother Chris and Brother Reg coming up here to preach. And the things that God uh, did with that um, just it just blew me away at how God blessed that. It convinced me that it was the right thing to do. I'd like to plan on one for next May. And um, I've got a couple ideas of some people that I want to try to get here uh, to, uh, to, help, to help preach that. Some, some people that I think would be very, very interesting to hear. And some people that I know have a great love for the Word of God. And at that time, I mentioned, I've probably told some of you privately, I've mentioned uh, to people in my family, I've mentioned it here in church, I've said it on Pastor Mike online, um, that we were enjoying at that time, a um, we were enjoying a a blessing and a peace and a grace in our church, uh, the likes of which I had not seen in a long time. And um, it was refreshing to me as pastor. It was a blessing to me. Um, and it just gave me a lot of encouragement, a lot of needed encouragement. And um, But I had also said at that time, Hi, how are you doing? Good to see you. Jody's mom's here, everybody. I just, huh? Yeah, you. I just, that tells you where my mind is. How long you been sitting there? About an hour. About an hour, I believe it. Well, it's good to see you again. But uh, anyway, that just kind of shows you where my mind is. Um, but I had mentioned at that time, you know, get ready. Because when you, when you got, when, when you personally are doing what you know is right, serving the Lord, praying, read your Bible, helping people, taking a stand, different things like that, it's not going to go unnoticed. Okay? The devil's not going to like it. And he's going to get you. He's going to hit you hard. He's going to be real mean about it. And he's not trying to just hurt you. He's trying to destroy you. Okay? I know this. I know it both from the Bible and I know it from experience. Our adversary does not play by the rules. He does not favor one over another. Um, he does not leave one alone while he goes that his goal is to destroy everybody and everything. His goal is to destroy uh, family relationships. His goal is to destroy husband and wife. His goal is to destroy our children right in front of us. Right in front of us. Um, <clears throat> you, I, I guess you heard what I was watching on YouTube the other day. Anybody hear that? Lisa... Lisa went with Tracy, and they went out running around, so I just sat out by a campfire and had my iPad, and I've been studying, I've been studying our adversary, the devil, he's a roaring lion. So I kept seeing all these videos on YouTube that I wanted to watch on lions and how they devour things. 
And I didn't know that every time I saved a video to my playlist so I could watch it later, a Twitter feed went out. And I saved probably 15 videos. And I haven't watched them yet. And then all of a sudden I get messages from people saying, Pastor, have your, your Twitter feed been hacked? Has somebody been, has somebody, somebody using your, your YouTube deal has been watching lions eat stuff? And I'm going, how did that happen? Okay, so I've been watching lions. I've been watching how they devour things. And I'm going to tell you something. Lions, these lions will grab a water buffalo's calf that's newborn and eat it right in front of the mama. And not care a thing about it. So if you think you're dealing with an adversary that can be... That, can, uh, that you can play your little emotional game on it and he'll back off, you're dead wrong. Okay? And um, so since, since May, it has been nonstop. There are probably things in this room right now that I don't know about. I'm not saying I have to. I'm not saying I'm asking you to tell me. Because just the things that I know are troubling enough. Okay? Just the things that I know are troubling enough. Very troubling to me. Um, what I preached last Sunday, I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about, you know, I was traveling down the road yesterday coming back from Indiana. And I'm just thinking about where Daniel's heart was and what he was praying about. And there's just there's something <clears throat> that I thought about yesterday and I'm holding back on saying because I don't know if it's I don't know if it's really of the Lord or it's just me. Okay? And if it's just me, and if I say it, then it's gonna it's gonna I know how to make I I know very well how to make bad things worse. I know how to do it. I'm very good at it. Okay? So you just you just pray for me while I'm talking that I say the right thing. Okay? Uh, in Daniel chapter nine, Daniel understood in verse two there, he said, I Daniel understood by books the number of the years where of the word came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And then I want you to look. I've got it up there on the screen for you to read it. Which is my way of saying get your Bible out and turn there. Okay? <clears throat> Daniel chapter 9. I'm going to read this and then you pray for me while I'm reading it because if I say this, what I want to say, if it's, I want it to be of the Lord, alright? So help me, help me pray for discernment. In verse 3, <clears throat> man I can't even read it and it's right here in front of me. Verse 3, I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love Him and to them that keep His commandments. So the first thing I'm going to say to you is, do you want God's mercy on your life? Okay? Do you believe that God will give you mercy? Okay? Now, what you just nodded your head to was you were admitting in front of everybody in this room and on camera there's a reason why you want God's mercy. Is there not? Because you are full of sin. You're full of it. And you know and you recognize that without God's mercy you are going to burn in hell. 
until such a time as when God delivers hell into the lake of fire, and then you're going to burn there. That's why you need God's mercy. But let me tell you something. What I don't want is a church full of people who say they want God's mercy that do not love God. Because you don't get it if you don't love Him and you don't keep His word. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. It's one thing to say amen to my preaching. It's one thing to say amen. It's oh, that's oh, that Bible's good. Oh, yeah, we stand on the King James Bible. And then you not do it and not care about it. Okay? So I'm going to ask you, if you want God's mercy, do you love God? Because if you loved God, then you would love the things that God loves. And you would care about the things that God cares about. And you would want the things that God wants. Okay? And my question to you is, do you want those things? Don't, and don't, listen. I've been in church all my life. And I'm going to be honest with you. There is a reason why... Most people in America would not give you a dime for a whole box full of church people. They don't trust them. They don't trust them because they brag one thing, boast one thing, and live another. Right in front of everybody. And like it doesn't matter. Well, I'm telling you it matters. It does matter makes a difference on whether or not we're going to be a church that's going to be right or we're going to be a church that's going to be a bunch of hypocrites. Okay? And again, everything that I'm saying to you, I've already said it to myself, God's already said it to me, and I'm saying it to me again. So I'm getting it three times. Okay? You're getting it once. There's some bad things that have gone on in some people's lives sitting in this room. Some things, it's not your fault. Some things, it was. And only God can tell you the difference. I can't do that. I can't be your judge. You don't want me to be your judge. I don't want to be your judge. Okay. If it's not your fault, then it's called persecution. And the devil is going to try to beat you to death. Because you love the Bible, and you love God, and you love His mercy, and you love His church, and you love God's people. And he's going to try to punish you for that. Okay? If it is your fault, it is not persecution. It's one of two things. It's either you're getting the rod of God, the chastening of God, because you're His Son, or it is a foretaste of His wrath because you're not His Son. And what's coming down the road to you is far worse. Okay? Far worse. And again, none of these things, I, I can't tell you which is which. Only God can do that. So I'm going to ask you this morning, do you love God? You want His mercy. Then you've got to love Him. You've got to want what God wants in your life. You've got to want God's ways in your life. Verse 5. We have sinned. I want everybody to say that out loud with me. We have sinned. It's not one of us. It's all of us. Some more than others. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Don't tell me how much you love God. Don't tell me how solid you are in the King James. If you're not willing to let God do in your life what He wants to do. Not what you want to do and put God's name on it. There's a difference. 
Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as it is this day. Confusion. You don't know what's going on, do you? It just you just wake up one day and all of a sudden, I mean, this is where we last month we were great. Now we're not, and it's leaving a lot of people going, "What's going on? Why? Why is this happening? How did this happen?" It's confusion of faces. See, when you're right with God. You're not confused about anything. You get it. When you're not right with God, none of it makes sense. Confusion. Where was it? Confusion of faces as it is this day to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel that are near and that are far off. Through all the countries where there, thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face. To our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. We have sinned against thee. We did. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. We did. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God, to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. I'm going to say that again. Now, listen to me here. This church is Jerusalem. This Jerusalem right here. This is the center of, of our little place. Beyond this camera are thousands of people that are watching and following how we do things here. And if we become big hypocrites, I can tell you that the people on the other side of that line there that's the reason why they're here. It's because they left the church that was full of the hypocrites. They left the church where they would not let God, where God was not allowed to deal with people in that church. And they said, we can't be part of that anymore. Now they've come to us. Okay? I, and to our credit, I've never boasted nor bragged about how good we were and about how perfect we were and about how everything that goes here is always goes well. Never said that. Never said that to you people. I've never said it about you people. Okay? We are who we are. And I'm not ashamed of this church. Okay? And I plan on sticking with it. But these people, whether... Whether you like that or not, that's what God gave us. Did He not? He gave us these people. He gave us Kenya. And those people need us to be right. And if we're not right, it's hurting them. So everything... Everything centers right here in Jerusalem, right here. Okay? All Israel transgressed thy law. So what I'm getting at is, even you people online, if you're with us today, then I'm talking to you too. You have transgressed. You've said, oh, we believe the King James Bible. That's why we latched on to Bethel Church. But if you don't do what God said, what good is it if you just hear what God said? Listen, you didn't raise your children with that kind of nonsense. Telling them what to do, but then ex being accepting of them when they didn't do it. You didn't raise your children that way. And God's not going to raise you that way either. 
All Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured out upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake unto us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us a great evil. For unto the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made, watch this, verse 13, I'm, I'm going to say it. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore the hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. Now I'm going to say this because I just read it in scripture. I got, I was going through this prayer that Daniel prayed. And it occurred to me. He's praying. He's not just praying for himself. And he's not just praying for the tribe of Judah. He's praying for all of Israel. Now there's a great, great, great teaching in the Bible about intercessory prayer Moses inter was an, he interceded on behalf of Israel to God Moses was listen to me Moses was willing to let God send Moses to hell instead of destroy Israel can you fathom that I mean, I, I love my family. I love my wife. I love my children. But I could not stand here and say that I'm willing to go to hell so long as my family doesn't. That's the one place that I don't want to go to. And Moses said it about Israel. Paul, Romans 11. Praying for Israel. He's praying for all of the Jews to be saved. And then we have Daniel. Who has made his prayer and his intercession on behalf of the whole nation of Israel. Um, so I got was thinking about that because... The last few weeks, man, I've been doing a lot of praying for people. I've been searching the scripture, looking for answers. I've, I've asked God, God, is it God is it me? Is there something you're trying to say to me? God trying to deal with me? And I have been praying. And I have been burdened. And I have I've ached, spent three days on vacation, reading my Bible, and praying for this church. And my question is, just like it says in verse 13, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. And I'm looking at faces in this room, which you know I don't do very often. If, I, if, you, if I'm preaching to you, I don't look at you. Except for today. I've looked at every face in this room. And my question is, am I the only one that cares? Am I the only one that cares what goes on in your marriage? Am I the only one that cares about what happens in this church? Because in this verse, it was very obvious that Daniel was praying a prayer for people 
who did not care whether God changed them or not. So, here's the question I'm asking you. Why is it that it could be me, it could be anybody praying for you. Why is it that apparently they care more about your soul than you do? Why is it that there are some people in this church who care very much about this church and care more about it than other people? Why is it that people pray for you and are trying everything they can to make your life better? They're putting out all the effort. You're not doing a thing. You're not praying. Or you're praying. How can I say this? It just seems like you're the one that God is going to deal with and yet some people care more about where you end up and how you turn out than you do. Does that make sense? You think I'm, you think I'm right in saying that? Don't tell me what I want to hear. Because... There are people who come here and they pray for this church and they support this church. They support it with their prayers. They support it with their beliefs. They support it with their finances. They support it with their presence here. And in some cases, they care more than you do. Daniel obviously cared more for how Israel turned out than Israel cared. That's why, that's how they got in the situation they're in. Who in here has somebody that you know that's lost and they're going to hell? Raise your hand. Rose, I know you and I know your family. And I know for a fact, Rose, that Rose cares more about her brothers and sisters and where they spend eternity than they ever did. She mentions them in prayer all the time. Comes in and, and talks to me about pray for, pray for my sister, pray for my brother, pray for my cousin. She sends them letters to witness to them. She tries to talk to them, tries to tell them to get in church. And it just, it makes me mad when I see Rose being the only one who cares for the people in her family when they don't care. And it ain't right. Did that make sense to everybody? That's what I'm trying to say. Daniel apparently was the only one who cared enough to confess the sins that he wasn't guilty of. And he did it because he loved them. I'm not begrudging Pray and trying to help anybody in this church. I'm not mad about it. I'm not upset about it. I'm not saying that I'm holier than thou. Never, ever do I ever want to get that across. But you've heard me talk about the Christian welfare system. Have you not? Is it wrong if a man has the ability to go out and work? Is it wrong? And he does not work and then pulls your tax money in welfare. Is it wrong for that man to pull that money out and take that money and run with it while you do all the work and labor and he does nothing? Is that wrong? And that's one of the things that's really bad wrong with this country. People jumping on welfare, people jumping on disability. And you know what? For every, I wish that the county executive of 
Jefferson County, Missouri, or the governor of the state of Missouri, would round up every worthless deadbeat in the state of Missouri who is stealing disability money from the government funds when they can go out and work and round them up, throw them into prison, and take that money that was saved and give it to these guys. Because they can't do it for themselves. They're the ones who need it. Amen? I'm with you, Frankie. I love you guys. And I don't mind praying for people who are struggling. I don't mind trying to help people and trying to counsel people who are hurting. They're having a hard time. Because I feel like I'm there myself right now. But when you can live right, and when you can pray, and when you can read your Bible, and when you can make a difference for God in your life and in your family, and you're not, And you're making your church take up the slack for you. You're on the welfare system. I'm sorry. I just don't have a lot of compassion on you. When you have the ability. And you just don't. So that's not a disability. That's just laziness. Am I right? There I said it. I don't feel better after saying it. Okay? I'm going to keep praying for you. And I'm going to keep loving you. And I'm going to keep interceding for you. That God not destroy you. And God not tear your house apart. And God not destroy your witness and your testimony in front of lost people. I'm going to keep praying for you. Because that's what people who love each other do. Amen about that? Um, everybody online, everybody sitting here. This is fasting week. This is fasting week. Did you agree with I with what I just said, right? Proof. There's I know there's rules about fasting. Don't tell everybody that you're fasting. But if you really care about where you are right now, then why don't you do something about it? Because somebody else is this week. Somebody else is going to be praying for you this week. Somebody else is going to be cutting meals out of their day for you. Why don't you do that for yourself? We have several things that are going on. I love you guys. Frankie and Ron. Ron's going to be going to camp here for too long. Gary and Stacy and Luke. I give anything in the world for these fellows. Amen. So this is fasting. This is prayer week. Okay? We're going to do it because when just one person in our church is hurting, the rest of us help soothe the hurt. Am I right? This is a body. And if you've ever noticed that, if you've ever had a broken arm, Ever had a broken arm before? Okay. I had a broken wrist when I was a boy. Fell off the slide. You know your whole body hurts. Your whole body suffers. You know why that is? Is that the whole body is donating its own resources. Oxygen, nutrients, blood cells, white blood cells. They're donating their portion to the part that's hurting. 
You see that? That's what a body does. If it was just one person in this church, and a few weeks ago it was, it was just one. And what we all should have done, maybe some of you did, we should have been fasting and praying for this one. But today it's more than just one. It's several. Because it grew. And the devil just saw what he did when he hurt one. So then he went out and tried to hurt more. There's some things that have gone on. I can't even say. But the devil has hit us hard. Very hard. And at this time, this is the time when we need to stick together. Donate our resources and give for one another's benefit so that the whole body can be right. Okay? The whole body can be right. Else, Jesus said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. Cast it from me. And of course, people have said, oh, that doesn't really mean that. Jesus didn't really mean that if, you know, if you're you know, you commit a sin with your right hand that you cut it off. He did not say sin. Where's our medical people? What happens if there's an infection, let's say, in your right hand? The whole body's going to try to heal that, right? What happens if that won't be healed? What do you got to do? You got to cut it off. It's, you know what I'm looking at in this room? I'm looking at a whole body full of people that I don't want to have cut off. I don't want to lose one person out of this church. And we may before it's all over with. So it would be better for us if we all work together in prayer and in fasting to make sure that God keeps us all together. Can I hear you say amen? And again, this is not just what's going on in this room. It has already spilled out to people who have been part of our extended congregation. Things you don't know about. If you come to me after the service, I'll tell you. Okay? Um, while it's on my mind, this is part of it. I'm going to meet with our board this afternoon, 3 o'clock. Okay? General board. I'm going to meet with you guys. Okay? But my prayers this week are going to be hungry prayers because I care. I care about you. I care about what's going on. Okay? So I'm not asking you to stand up if you'll join me because you're not supposed to do that when you fast. Okay? You're not supposed to go tell everybody that you're doing it. You just go do it. Okay? But I'm going to ask you to make your prayers this week hungry for prayers. Okay? Make your prayers hungry for prayers. We've been, we've been hit in marriages. We've been hit in family situations. Uh, we've been hit financially. I mean, just it just keeps the devil just keeps rolling it in. It just seems like every way to come at us, he's working at us. 
and I think we can beat them. Do you think that? Let me, uh, did you ever, did you ever wonder why God told Israel 70 years? Why 70 years? And I'm not going to give you all of this, but I found this last night. In Numbers 11, verse 16, The Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of, of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the Spirit which is upon thee, and put it upon them. They shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. You see that? Jethro got on to Moses and he said, Moses, what you're doing is not right. Moses was judging every little issue with the law amongst a million people. Sun up to sunset every day. And Jethro's father-in-law told Moses, Moses, that ain't right. It's not wise to do that. You cannot bear the burden of the people alone. So God told Moses, Moses, I'm going to bring 70 men in here. You know what hit me? That's about the average size of this whole church on a Sunday morning. About 70 people. 70 people to help Moses bear the burden. Do you get that? I can't bear it all alone. And even though you don't know everything that's going on, and you can't know everything that's going on, I can't bear it alone. Okay? Can't do it. What happened was the 70 people that God, and he, he said, he said, I'll talk to them and, and I'll put my spirit, same spirit that was in Moses, I put him in that. You know what I get out of that? You guys practically amen everything I say just about. I'm going to say you agree 100% of everything comes out of my stupid head, but you amen me. Which means that I think God, the same way he talks to me, I think God talks to you all the same. Does that make sense to everybody? I think he does. I like it that way. I mean, why would I want to sit here with a bunch of people that disagreed with nine-tenths out of everything I said? I wouldn't want that. I don't think I have that here. Okay? And the people online. But what happened was, those 70 men went back. And if you look in Ezekiel chapter 8, you'll see them there. And you'll see them turning bad. And that's why God went in and got them. Seventy men for 70 years. That's kind of what I put together last night. Okay? That would basically amount to this whole church. I don't want us to have to leave this place and then have the Muslims come in, tear this building down, and build a mosque right here. You said, well, where'd you get that from? Great Britain. Great Britain is not a Christian nation anymore. It is the birthplace of the King James Bible. But those old churches that were around in the 1600s, they're either torn down, they're museums, or the mosque has moved in next door and said, we're in charge now. I don't want that here. It'd be a shame on us if that ever happened. Okay? So devil, we're putting you on notice. You pushed we're going to push back. And I was sitting trying to catch a catfish Thursday. And a little snake, Antonio, swam.
swimming up in that river. I'm thinking water moccasin. And I don't like, I don't care what it was. I don't care if his name was Happy. Happy the snake. I am your friend, Happy the snake. You are not my friend, beast. I'm sitting there trying to catch catfish, and this snake keeps swimming by the bank where I'm sitting at. And you know what I noticed? I got, I did, I pulled my 38 special that I can't hit the side of the barn with. And I pulled it out, and I was going to try to shoot the head off that snake from 10 feet. And it scared me, and I stood up. Do you know what it did? It curled back, you know, like they're going to strike. Went down like a submarine. And it did that three more times. Every time I stood up, he dove. I'm not taking the snake coming after us. But I don't want to do this alone. This place means more to me. I, I don't want to say it means more to me than my family because this my family's here. It's like part of my family. Been that way. And I think it means that to you too. So I'm not mad at you. But if everybody else is going to pray for you this week, how dare you walk away from that? You're just lazy. Okay? So, I'm going to have some prayer time here. And I'm not going to ask you to come join me. I'm not going to do it. I did not make this sermon to be self-serving. I did not make it to be a pity party on me. This is just what God laid on my heart. I have to say it. Okay? So I'm going to come and pray. And I'm making a commitment. I don't know how long it's going to be this week. But my prayers this week, for till God releases me, my prayers are going to be hungry this week. Okay? And they're going to be that way for you. Okay? So, I love this church and I want to pray now. Okay?